Welcome to the Fantasy Football Forge. My name is Steve, and if you want to know how dated uh, this video is in terms of how early I'm recording this, <clears throat> Just Fields was uh, just traded while I was actually taping my previous video. And now we're going to look at the linebackers and the safeties. Thank you very, very much for tuning into the channel. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you like the video or just because you want to help me out because that's very much appreciated. Don't forget to do that. It helps so, so very much. Let's get started here with the top eight linebackers, top nine safeties in this video. If I can find the fast forward, the forward button here on the slide and my number eight linebacker is at f1 olufoshio i've never had to say that aloud i knew it would never uh come out quite crack but that was okay it it def one olufoshio why not six foot and a half 236 pounds i've got a fourth round draft grade on him some of his strengths are uh, his coverage abilities he's got great balance change of direction patience which makes up for any lack of athleticism that he may have it which uh and all of those uh traits uh, showed up in his vert and his broad jump that he has a powerful explosive base which goes towards once again the change of direction and the balance not so much the patience but the patience um helps him to to not get behind in plays and to see the play out and diagnose it before making his moves he plays with a high motor he's very uh girthy of a guy so you know durability is definitely not going to be a concern about him above average arm length and a very long arm span unfortunately he does have an injury history and he lacks those high-end athletics at the college level he did manage to be a sideline to sideline impact guy he just lacked the high-end speed and he did well in the 40 and the 10 split for his size but that's very specifically for his size um which means you know average or worse uh in general compared to other linebackers over the past three years he's 24 years old a little bit of an older prospect as well uh with the injury history i think those things will hold him back but you watch the tape there is a lot to like about him tommy eichenberg is my second uh well my seventh ranked tommy uh tommy linebacker here six foot two and a half 233 pounds he does a nice job of keeping his eyes on the play and playing through the end of the play never giving up on it run defense is a positive for him he does a good job of finishing plays getting the tackle and he's rangy sideline to sideline run defender in large part due to his football iq not necessarily his athletics so once again much like at f1 Hello for show you. Um, the athletics aren't quite there, but still, they're good enough players that they manage to uh, do these things. He does have very quick feet for short area situations. So, you know, in the box, maybe it was where he is at uh, at the next level. Anyways, because of this lack of athletic, he has a good frame already, and he should be able to bulk up uh, more without an issue. Yeah, I thought he would have weighed like a little bit more for his frame, but um, it just looks good. And he can add a little bit of weight to it yet. So I, I think he will definitely be looking like an, an NFL linebacker in no time. Uh, weaknesses come down to his coverage, change of direction, ability, below average power in his base. He does not have speed to cover the passing game sideline to sideline better against the run sideline to sideline than he is in the past. Um, there you go, 2020, 22 years old, and he had a very disappointing 2023 after having a stellar 2022, and so that's kind of what you're betting on is the 2023 tape, but you got to figure out what, what went wrong, or the 2022 tape, what went wrong in 2023, was he hampered by an injury or whatnot, um, and, and the answer to that will probably go a long ways towards the NFL, determining exactly where he goes. Unfortunately, I'm not privy to uh, being able to find out such details so easily. Up next, uh, another guy with a fourth round grade on him, six foot one and a half, 231 pounds. He plays with violence instincts. He's got good range. He's got good production at the college level, and he does have the athletics to back everything up. He's got really good speed, and it's, you know, these are, that's uh, a large part of the reason why I ended up having him ahead of these guys in this group. His tackling is rough. His working coverage was rough in 2023, However, um, let's see, he had a down year in 2023 after a good 2022 campaign, not a great 2021, battled through an ankle injury in 2023. So, you know, first year college, 21, maybe, maybe second year, uh, not so great, but then he came on strong before um, having an ankle injury and that hurting 
him uh, for much of 2023, which might have been a lot of the reason for his struggles. He needs to put on some weight to hold up better at the next level. So uh, durability, uh, you know, a little bit of concern at his weight, but not by much. Uh, yeah, Tyron Hopper put, put on the tape. I really, really liked him. And I do think that he has some of those underlying uh, athletic abilities that go along with uh, the production to warrant being taken in the fourth round for sure. Now we're in the territory of guys who I'm really, um, you know, expecting something from. And that's going to be Cedric Gray here at six foot one, 232 pounds. Got a third to fourth round grade on him. Depending on the team and the fit and, and how much you like him, I could very well see him deserving to be taken in the third round. But also, would it be a shock if he were to go in the fourth round? No, not necessarily. I understand that as well. Did I say he's 6'1", 232 pounds? If not, I did now. He is explosive, plays with a high motor, high effort, quick read, and react kind of guy. Above average arm length and wingspan. You'd like to see him be a little bit more instinctive than he is, but uh, still very quick to react at least. He does over-pursue plays sometimes. Once again, going to those instincts and those re quick reactions. Uh, sometimes maybe misdiagnosis the play IQ level. Uh, could increase their below uh, average strength. So getting off of blocks and once again tackling are going to be uh, concerns. He did do okay at tackling though, at least uh, in college. That wasn't a huge issue, but he does have very small hands, so that might hurt as well. Um, let's see. He had a good couple of practices at the Cedar Bowl. He was one of few linebackers to actually stand out at all at the Senior Bowl. He is. Number one on Bruce Feldman's most recent freaks list as well. So that's the kind of guy you're getting there in Cedric Gray. Let's move on to my number four linebacker this year is going to be Jeremiah Trotter. These next four are everybody's top four. Really, Jeremiah Trotter, six foot, 228 pounds. I've got a strict third round draft grade on. I could be convinced putting him back into the second, third round uh, group where I had him. I originally had him neck to neck with the next two linebackers, but move them back a little ways. He is competitive. He does play with um, a lot of energy. He's a high IQ player. He's a definite asset in coverage. It's the six foot eight, 228 that really concerns me for him. He's got below average height, below average weight, small hands and wingspan, though he is like average girth. So I'm not overly concerned about the durability factor with Jeremiah Trotter, but a little bit. Uh, also, some of those things below average, you know, hands, arm, wingspan, weight, height, uh, none of that helps with the fact uh, that he, he's not a good tackler and, and should could only stand to get worse at the next level outside of just becoming um, a better tackler straight up. But uh, maybe the reason he's not a good tackler is because those things are holding him back. Another guy who overruns the plays a little bit too often, and he does not have elite athletic uh, kind of speed, sideline to sideline coverage, unfortunately. So Jeremiah Trotter, a little undersized, not quite having some of the other factors to overcome it. But a uh, high IQ player, like him a lot. Really, truly do. I don't want to understand, sell him. And uh, the same goes for Junior Colson. Second to third round draft grade on him. Six foot two, 238 pounds. He's an incredible athlete. He's got all the physical tools. Incredibly quick, by the way. Uh, above average height, above average weight and arm length there. Good sideline to sideline coverage. Good range. And if he gets his hands on you, you're probably going down. So he finishes the plays very, very well. Doesn't always take advantage of those long arms like I talked about. Stacking and shedding. Not strengths of his. Loses when blockers get their hands on him. So he's got to keep guys off of him. And he's got to use that length a little bit better in doing that. Is really what it comes down to. And the other thing that I struggled with Junior Colson and part of why, you know, potential third round guy for me is that it seemed to me like he was working from behind a lot of the time. If he's already working from behind at college level, does that become such a big gap that he's not able to kind of recover and, and make the play anyways? Uh, because even though he's working from behind, he ended up getting the production, sometimes maybe barely. I do have a quote here, and I am unsure from who, unfortunately, but it is a cool quote. Intelligent violence is how somebody uh, explained his game, and he is only 21 years old as well. So, uh, good, uh, you know, good age to continue to learn more for the position. Next up, we've got Edger and Cooper as my number two linebacker. A lot of people's number one. Junior Colson, some people's number one. I don't think Jeremiah Trotter is really anybody's number one. 
But uh, Edron Cooper, I do have a straight second round draft grade on him. A 6'2", 229 pounds, quick short area closing speed, above average long speed. He's pretty similar to my number one, Peyton Wilson. Uh, he's got extremely long arms and a very long wingspan, which should help him a lot. Shedding, shedding uh, would-be blockers, however, that is an area that he needs to improve on, but at least he's got the tools to do it. Um, and he plays mean, which, you know, a lot of NFL Coaching staffs, evaluators, do like guys playing with attitude. So, weakness, he is a little bit too slender. He needs to bulk up. There is some durability concerns due to his slenderness. Uh, he completely whiffs on too many tackles. Maybe, you know, due to that slenderness. Also, just being too aggressive and missing the tackle and maybe not using the correct form all the time. He gets overly aggressive and he bites on false action too often as well. So, those are the concerns. He can be tricked, basically. He doesn't always finish plays and there's a little bit of, you know... Uh, concern about him just withstanding, standing up at the next level. I think he could put on the weight just fine and not lose out on some of the athletic upside that he has. He played Mike in college. Uh, look for him to be able to do that at the next level. That's going to bring us on to my number one linebacker. And I think clearly the number one linebacker, much like at the running back position, however, uh, injury concerns are what makes it less of a clear picture. Six foot four, 234 pounds. Um, he believes, as far as his health goes, that the NFL teams uh, believe that his bad health issues are behind him. That is apparently the impression that he has gotten from the meetings that he's had with teams. Whether that's just an impression or whether he's literally been told that, though, I don't know. So I'm going with that's the impression that he has. He's still very slender, so even if the teams are like not concerned about the previous injuries being... Um, you know, something that's going to hamper them and, and possibly like for re-injury reasons, I do think that they still have to be concerned about the durability of him with how slender he is at the next level. Um, he is a violent hitter and this is the thing too, you know, it kind of goes back to like the Jaden Daniels thing here. Like, all right, you're really slender and this is your play style and the two don't necessarily match up and oftentimes do lead to guys being injury prone unless you put on some bulk. So uh, despite being so slender, he's an incredibly violent player. He puts his body on the line all the time. He plays with incredibly high effort. He doesn't care that he's slender, and he plays like that. He's very fast. He's very quick. The acceleration, not even just the agility there. Uh, he is versatile. You can put him in the edge. You can put him in the slot. You can put him in the linebacker spot. And he can play all over the place. He keeps his eyes on the backfield, and he has good awareness of what's going on. And then he practices good patience, and he doesn't over-pursue plays while maintaining aggression and that's what i really liked about his game he's not over pursuing stuff he is correctly diagnosing and going after and despite the play fact that he is violent and everything it's like um you know like a fighter jet or something like he doesn't attack until he's locked on the target but when he's locked on uh, good luck you're done for so uh, and he does a very good job of getting locked on the correct target very often um, he also has a knock for coming down with the ball. Weaknesses, um, beyond the health, he's got very short arms and very small hands. But besides that, like, not a whole lot of weaknesses in his game. He is an elite in coverage, great to elite uh, tackler, great run defense, and a good pass rusher as well. And he's just one of those guys who is straight up fun to watch. Like, there's just nothing more to it. Even at the combine, while he wasn't playing football, he was still just kind of fun to watch. That's to bring us to our uh, linebacker gems here. And my first gem is going to be Steel Chambers. And I still can't figure out, do I like this guy just because of the name? I've got a fifth, sixth round draft grade on him. Six foot and a half, 226 pounds. He's got excellent lateral sideline to sideline rangey speed. And he also ran a very good shuttle, so he's very quick to getting there. His instincts, his awareness in zone coverage are all great. Where he's a, a little bit weaker as a player, the, some of the bad things about him, he's uh, smaller hands, very short length arms, arm span. Uh, that's going to help you, hurt you when you're tackling, and he was not the best tackler. That's going to hurt you when you're trying to um, you know, get off of a block, uh, block shedding, stacking and shedding, all of that. Not great. Blitzing. Not something that you can uh, really ask Steel Chambers to do a whole lot. And when you ask him to cover in man coverage, he gets a little bit grabby. So, you know, there's issues to his game. At the end of the day, when I put the Steel Chambers tape on and watch him, like, I just can't help but like what I'm seeing. So, um, I, think he's, I think he's got some tools to work with. Uh, but he does obviously have some limitations to his game. And that's where ultimately, you know, fifth, sixth round 
probably where he'll end up being taken like sixth round. I like him a little bit more. Uh, I'd be willing to take a shot on him in the fifth round just because of liking what I'm seeing from him. And my second gem here is Jordan McGee, uh, six to seventh round draft grade on him, six foot one, 228 pounds, uh, slightly slender guy, just on the slender side, but he is a very smooth mover. He's a very good, quick accelerator. He has average long speed, but uh, because of that acceleration, he is mildly explosive for his size as a player. He can he can bring a little bit of juice to everything. He's uh, a good blitzer. That's where you know that juice comes in handy. He shows solid instincts and game IQ goes a long ways, and he's a good block shedder as well. Although of course I have another note saying he struggles in block shedding, so I guess it depends what I, I'm watching and looking at. He doesn't always finish the play, unfortunately. He doesn't always get the tackle, get the production, and he does get fooled while looking into the backfield. Sometimes he can be. Uh, you know, uh, think that it's a run play when it's play action, that kind of thing. So he bites on those kinds of uh, tricky plays. He is built more like a safety, and he's a solid candidate for a star role, which if you're not familiar, that'd be like a linebacker uh, safety kind of uh, role. Put him in as like a nickelback almost type of role. Uh, Dallas uses that a lot. Los Angeles Rams have used the star role quite, quite a bit. Um yeah, it's, it's a popular enough role around the league that uh, I, I think that he's the type of guy who they would look for as a guy who they'll probably put on the practice squad to develop and bring up in case their uh, starting star role guy gets injured or anything like that. Uh, and, and, you know, hopefully down the road, he could be your starter at a cheaper price than whoever you're currently paying to do that for you. So that is all of my gems. That's going to bring us on to my safeties. And before we get to the safeties, let's hear a word from my sponsor. Me, Steve of the Fantasy Football Forge. I wanted to make you aware of some of the benefits that you can receive by becoming a supporting member of the channel for the low, low price of 99 cents. Upon becoming a channel member, you will receive a link to a Discord channel where you can communicate with the community on whole. And at this time of draft season, you will also receive access to a bunch of extra benefits. Number one. Write-ups for each player I've scouted at each position, some of their strengths, their weaknesses, and extra notes that I wrote about each of them. Number two, my positional draft board with players in order of their draft grade via round, first round, second round, second slash third round draft grade, etc. Number three, my top 50 big board. Thank you very much for any and all of your support. And now back to your regularly scheduled programming. Welcome back. Thank you for sticking around. I, I do want to mention, I should have wish I would have said this earlier and wish I would have said this in the uh, defensive line video, uh, that I do apologize for not having any um, footage of these players actually playing on the field. Um, I did that last year, a bunch of copyright claims, but I do think I, I'll try it again next year. I think it's just SEC uh, games with SEC teams that I need to avoid. I think they're the only ones that do that. So otherwise, um, I might be able to show you some of what I'm talking about at least then. So uh, look forward to that for next year. I know that makes for a much better, more enjoyable experience. I get it, but... Uh, Instead, I had to make these little slides. So my number one safety here, my number nine safety, I guess, uh, a third, fourth round grade on him, Malik Mustafa, 5'10", 209 pounds. He has elite speed. He hit 23 miles per hour uh, with on the in-game uh, GPS in college. He's, that's, you know, game-changing type of speed. And he's got special teamers uh, special teams gunner abilities. He's also great in run support, uh, in coverage. He's at his best in man slash press coverage, and he is very strong. Great upper body strength. Weakness is he has extremely short arms and extremely short wingspan. That does not help when you're trying to tackle guys or trying to grasp them, uh, and they're just outside of your grasp as well. He gets too handy in coverage sometimes, and he gets beat too often. So these are the reasons why he's looking more like a day three guy, maybe a late day two guy because of some of the elite traits that he offers, and the production wasn't so bad. He's a clear, strong safety, and he's built like a short linebacker at five foot ten. Once again, 209 pounds. And here's another guy with star role potential. And I just went over what a star role was. So that works out nicely. Didn't even plan that out. And he also was 59th on Bruce Feldman's freaks list. Last thing that I liked about Malik Mustafa was 
he has shown improvement year over year. So over the last two seasons, he's gotten better and better, which you like to see coming into the NFL that a guy has not stalled and that he has continued to improve also um, each year learning. You know, there's still learning. There's still upside to the player. That's going to bring us on to my number eight uh, safety here in Dadrian Taylor Thomas, another guy who have a third, fourth round draft grade on. And he's a guy who I want to get higher sometimes, but then I can't quite. Uh, five foot ten and a half, hundred ninety seven yards, and he absolutely does fly around the field. Very good acceleration and long speed uh, for him. His pre snap communication skills are good. He's a quick learner and he is a leader. He's going to bring you some versatility and he also shows great patience, which is always good to have when you're back there playing safety. Weakness is he's he's short and he is light. You know, once again, under five foot eleven, hundred ninety seven pounds. He has below average arm length. That's not going to help with uh, getting off blocks and tackling, of course. Although he he's an okay tackler, and he gave up too much cushion too often in college. Now was that his decision? Was that a coach's decision? Was that a mutual decision because of some deficit in his game? I don't know a hundred percent for sure, but that is something that you know. You don't want to give too much cushion or just going to dink and dunk on you too much. Um, as far as he goes, he's a bit of a utility tool type of defensive back. Think of a Tyron Matthew nickel safety slash true free safety combo. Single high kind of guy. All right, that's going to bring us on to my number seven safety. In Keaton Oladapo, which always reminds me of um, basketball player Oladipo. But I always want to say it like that. But Kitan Keaton Oladapo, six foot two, two hundred and nineteen pounds, pretty good size to us. He's really good against the run to us. Uh, yeah, me too. I'm I'm also six two, two hundred nineteen pounds. Um, he, he's really good against the run. In fact, I wrote that he rocks against the run. And when you're built like that, that makes sense. He uses his uh, strong arms to whack the ball out, and he forces fumbles very often. For a guy his size, he has excellent change of direction ability. Um, once he's obviously very well built, he looks like an NFL player already at 6'2", 290 pounds, and he's very good at forcing incompletions. Where he struggles is in zone coverage to some extent. He's rigid in his transitions, and his backfield awareness is not great. His production has improved year over year over year, so every year that he's played, he's gotten better and better. You love to see that. He's gone from good to great to excellent in terms of the PFF grading. And, um, yeah, I really like the tape on him. He's, you know, kind of a gemish kind of guy here in Kitan Oladapo for me. So um, look out for him. See what you think. Let me know if you have experience. You know, am I off on him? Maybe I am. Let me know if you've uh, got to see him play a lot in college and saying, hey, uh, you're a little too high on him. I'm always open to hearing these things out. But now we're going to get to a true my guy who I don't care what you have to say. I'm not changing my opinion on Tyke Smith. I love him. 5'10", 202 pounds. He is built like a fire hydrant. He is that star role kind of guy, a power slot even kind of guy. Um, it was what I believe power slot came from Sigma, uh, the NFL Stock Exchange got boys. Uh, he is 23 years old, so, you know, he's not on the young side anymore. But he does have that average, uh, above average size of 5'10", 202 pounds. High energy physical player, good instincts and anticipation, and he's got good long speed. He's just, you know, an active player who's always playing around the ball, and you keep him kind of close to the line of scrimmage, and he's going to do things for you. He is not a high-end athlete, despite um, the better numbers at the Combine. You know, it doesn't all translate onto the field. He can get handsy when he's playing in trailing position and doesn't have elite recovery speed. So once again, like I said, yeah, he's got good long speed, but um, it's not where his strengths lie. You want to keep him a little bit closer to the line of scrimmage. That's where he's going to be making most of his plays, basically. So Joe Taiki Smith, really like him. Uh, energizer bunny with um, like like I don't know armor on him type of player whatever that means top nine safety so let's get to the top five here and at number five we got Cameron Kinchins talk about a guy who did not help his giraffe stock at all at the combine uh, neither did his partner who I was like uh, getting kind of high on pre combine and said nah, never mind 
I guess not. Uh, so Cameron Kitchens, five foot eleven, two hundred and three pounds. He works well as a center fielder, although you know the um, combine numbers make you a little bit concerned about some of these things. He often displays good anticipation and ability to read offenses, especially against the run. He does take aggressive angles, however. Um, he's he's great at ball tracking skills, and he likes to get the turnover. His athleticism was, we thought, uh, something that would be a plus for him, and. It, ends up being not at all uh to the opposite effect unfortunately even average i would have understood because i didn't see like an elite athlete on the field but the numbers were not good and for a guy who is coming off the year that he came off of so he had a very good 2022 and in 2023 i think he just tried too hard and here's the thing Uh, here's why he's got a third round draft grade instead of a second um a lot of people were willing to give him the benefit of the doubt in terms of that being exactly it. He just tried too hard in 2023. He tried making all the good numbers and he whiffed a lot. He got too aggressive and he allowed big plays. He just, you know, too, too overly aggressive, uh, all that it came down to. And he just tell him to calm down and he can return to the guy who we thought might be as high as a first round draft kind of guy. So take him in the second, kind of balance that out. No, 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 no. And now it's hard to see the athletics translating, you know, uh, whatever athleticism he had, the single high stuff at the next level. Uh, it makes you question uh, what's going on. So, um, yeah, unfortunately, just a guy who's who's uh, taking a big hit. Didn't have a, a good process at all here. 21 and a half years old. There's still some promising things about him. Uh, you go two years back on the tape and it is all very good. Somebody's going to take a shot on him in the third round. I would, uh, yeah, I wouldn't take one earlier than that, though. Basically what it comes down to. That's to bring us to Jaden Hicks, my number four safety. Also a third round draft grade on him. Six foot two, 211 pounds. He's got um, good size, good height, good weight. All of it working in his favor. He plays with attitude and he hits tough. You know, helps to have uh, good size when doing that. And he's a high IQ player and he shows quick burst to close when playing in zone coverage. So click to close ability is nice and quick. His straight line speed is going to be a concern. He's got a sloppy black back pedal to him. And his man coverage abilities are not the absolute best. You'd rather have him in, in zone coverage. Uh, he did show year-over-year year improvement as a starter. Some people are very high on Jaden Hicks. I am high on Jaden Hicks, you know, I guess. I like him. Um, he's, I wouldn't quite put him into, like, my kind of gem territory or anything like that. But I do think that he's a little bit of a safer pick than Cam Kitchens, for sure. Um, and then other than that, you know, there's some guys later that... Like, Cam Kitchens is kind of just a guy who I, I might be willing to miss out on type of thing. Uh, so that's going to bring us on to my number three safety. That's going to be Javon Bullard. So you probably know who these top three are if you've been following the draft season so far. Javon Bullard, I've got a second to third round draft grade on him. Five foot, ten and a half, 198 pounds. He is fast. He went over 25, 20 miles per hour, not 25, at the senior bowl. He's extremely quick uh, in terms of his acceleration, even for his size. And he's got above average long speed. He plays instinctive, high IQ kind of play. Uh, good at recognizing routes and he does a really good job at forcing incompletions which you know being instinctive understanding your position and being good at recognizing routes all kind of work together and ultimately when they're all working together along with some of that good athleticism what's going to happen you're going to force incompletions so it all marries together and nicely for javon bullard overall the the concerns are he didn't give up too many big plays you know maybe being a little too over aggressive or Maybe still needing to understand the position a little bit better. Uh, so you'd like to see that cleaned up. He lacks some power in his game. Not a big guy by any means. And uh, he has below our average arm length and a very short wingspan. So this is going to work against him in terms of tackling. And of course, you know, knocking balls down at the next level, etc. He is about 21 and a half years old or so. Did not really impress at the senior bowl. Hasn't had some sort of excellent process here. But um, I I still like him quite a bit overall when I turn on the tape. So let's move on to my number two prospect here for the safety position. And that's going to be Kaylin Bullock, who uh, a lot of people soured on. Some people still like a lot. I don't know exactly where everybody's on him, but I'm keeping him at my number two spot here. 
uh, a second to third round draft grade, very similar to Javon Bullard in that sense. Six foot, 288 pounds. He is a smooth athlete and he can jump higher than a cow, than the cow that jumped over the moon, not backed up by a vert. Uh, so his vert apparently was not very good, but uh, when I'm watching him on the field, he can jump really, really freaking high. He has excellent acceleration as well. His waist um, fluidity is top notch. Uh, well, very, very good. It's a strength of his. His great coverage ability. He has elite ball skills. He acts like a coach on the field, calling out audibles to the defense. He has an above average arm length as well. In terms of his weaknesses, he's a little soft for us to run. Not even a little. You're not going to want to ask him to help. He's not going to pitch in against the run, really, because even if he does, uh, he's too weak for it. He's too slender to do it. He takes bad angles at. Uh, you know, when tackling, he's not a good tackler. He's extremely slender, okay? That's just not the game. You're going to need to put him, uh, you know, single high or whatever, free safety. You're just not going to want to ask for him to help in the running game. And that's going to take him off of, uh, I'm sure, just strictly, just completely off of some draft boards. But I do think that there are some systems, some coaches, whatever, who can get the best out of him. And I think that... If you're asking for, you know, a commander in the backfield to just prevent anything from going overhead in a single high coverage, I really like Kalen Bullock for that. And I think we're seeing a few more teams this year moving to single high coverage. So uh, maybe a good time for Kalen Bullock to come out in that in that sense. And that's going to bring us on to Tyler Newbin here, my number one safety in this class. I think a lot of people's number one. I've got a straight second round draft grade on him. So uh, maybe a little bit lower on him than some, but also... Um, understand it. Six foot one, 199 pounds. He does well when attacking near the line of scrimmage. He plays physically and with high energy. He has an exceptional, uh, good closing speed, and he's a very extinctual elite processor and communicator as well. So he does all the all the things good. Uh, just he's gonna have some limitations to him. He's a below average size, so a little bit, you know, once again slender. Uh, speed limitations to his range. He's not gonna be the rangiest of all like uh, people say he can be in a single high i would be a little bit concerned about putting him single high but um because of his instincts he should be able to overcome some of those speed concerns so maybe he'd be fine he can struggle against shifty receivers so maybe don't you know bring him up against the slot or at least not too close uh man to man man press and his footwork is an issue when covering deep so <laughs> Uh, there are some holes to the game, right? One thing that he does do for you, skill set that's becoming more and more important, it seems, maybe each year or every three years in the NFL, is that these tight ends are getting better and better, and you need somebody that has the skill set to block them. You know, that's part of the whole star role thing. And although he's not like the ultimate star role guy, as far as the safety goes, he does have the ability to blanket tight ends. He showed that in college. So um, that's, that's a skill set that I think defenses are looking to make sure they have so they don't get whooped up by some of those linebackers out there and that is it for not quite you got some safety gems i am losing my voice and my first gem here is going to be kenny logan jr fourth round graph grade on him five foot ten 213 pounds really like the tape on him he's uh good to great at forcing completions he does not struggle to take down guys who are much bigger than him uh tight ends etc talking about a guy who can help covering against tight ends and he plays smart vicious and with good instincts he does not wrap up when tackling he might be a concern that could be a concern going forward you know you just throwing a shoulder into a guy probably not going to work so well at the next level he can get beat from being overly aggressive in coverage and he's another guy who gets too handsy when playing from behind he had a much improved 2023 season so it's not something where uh, year over year over year improvement or we've seen him be successful for multiple years and he is 23 and a half years old so uh th you know that's working against him might not get taken in the fourth round simply because of some of those factors but i think if you go and watch kenny logan jr you'll be fairly impressed i really liked uh the tape on him trey taylor he's uh, a fifth to sixth grade round grade on him he is coming out of the air force academy and he has received a waiver from the air force academy to pursue an nfl career and serve once his time with the nfl is over he is a guy who has improved year over year over year as a starter for the air force his strengths are in man press coverage he sees the running back well and he attacks downhill very well attacks the ball on passes just as well he is built well lots of wells here he should be able to hold his own at the next level no problem durability concerns 
Uh, not a thing for him, of course, you know, coming out of the Air Force. He does well to keep his eyes on the quarterback, and he displays awareness of the play, uh, just like keeping his eyes on the backfield there for the running backs. I really liked him. Um, weaknesses, his change of direction is not his strong suit, you know, more of a straight line kind of guy. A lot of these military guys don't have that change of direction ability. It's just not something that their training um, gets them. So that's one thing where Trey Taylor, too, uh, hopefully he gets the chance and the opportunity in the NFL. And then if he's going to be able to get on some sort of more NFL oriented regimen, uh, he can take some of these traits and get a little bit better, uh, specifically at the athletic traits that are going to be, you know, uh, better serve him at the next level. He can't over pursue the run sometimes taking himself out of the play. And it does take him a moment to, to gather his quick click and close he was previously a running back uh part of what looking in the backfield he understands that and so yeah um just turn on the i really like trey taylor i think he is a guy who could actually have a long career coming out of um uh, you know one of the armed forces academies which uh, doesn't happen very often and in part because uh a lot of times they're uh, the type of athlete that they are just doesn't translate to the nfl very well uh, and that holds him back a lot. And then, you know, getting the ability to play isn't always easy as far as getting a waiver. Um, but I I hope and I think differently for this guy. Hopefully I'm not reading uh, the tape wrong on him. So if you know much about Trey Taylor, let me know. Uh, always exciting to see a serviceman get out there and be successful in the NFL. And I think he could be the next one. Just give him a couple of years. But uh, even in the meantime, special teams, ability, you know, hopefully he can bring some of that uh, and be valuable to a team. If he doesn't have any special teams ability, I suppose he's probably more like a sixth, seventh rounder in the, you know, to the NFL in their, their eyes. All right. Thank you very, very much. Uh, now that is the video. So peace out. I appreciate you. Once again, please like comment and subscribe. And, um, there will be one more video coming up for the cornerbacks. I'm going to be going on vacation and then, um, we're going to be like a, a month out from the combine here very soon. And I will be, uh, doing more specific mock drafts for the teams by a division. So look forward to those. Peace out.